In a couple seconds, you're going to be meeting Gus and Ruben. Uh, I, as Dave told you, our company does interactive software programming. So we specialize in interactive floor and wall technology, um, mostly for event services. Uh, so the signs that you saw as you were coming in, those are ours. The software that's running that is free. You can download it from our website. Basically, we made it because um, we wanted to make sure that this kind of technology was accessible and we wanted to play with it and we couldn't afford anybody else's stuff. So we, <laughs> we made it ourselves. And uh, when we launched the project in May and we, we put the software online and um, invited people to use it and give us feedback, um, I noticed that a lot of the people that were giving us feedback were parents and educators of children with autism. And I don't know very much about autism, so I started looking into it. And uh, a quarter of a million families in Canada are affected by it, so that's a lot of people. Um, so these people were writing to us and they were saying, hey, can you make this game to help my kid learn colors or numbers or the alphabet or whatever? And uh, yeah, we can, we can make them, we can sell them, we can do whatever. But I, I started thinking it would be really, really, really cool if those people could make their own games and share them with each other, um, that would be, it would develop some amazing resources. So we're working on community tools right now to allow people to make their own games, um, to allow kids to design their own games. And as part of that, we did a little project with Gus and Ruben um, to see whether or not it was you know, relatively easy, whether they understood it, whether it would be engaging. And uh, we made a video of the project. So um, go ahead and enjoy it, and uh, then we'll bring Gus and Ruben on the stage to show you what they made. Why is your thing a bunny? Because I like bunnies. Oh. Who doesn't like bunnies? I like bunnies. Everyone likes bunnies. Children are kinetic learners, which means they naturally learn by doing. Programs like Montessori also show that children learn exceptionally well from their peers. With this in mind, I spent a few hours with Gus and Ruben to see if we could make some interactive floor games together. I wanted to see if an activity like this would engage them, and what ideas they might come up with to help teach other kids. How do you make them go away? You stop moving. You guys are pretty good at not moving. It's amazing. First, we spent some time playing with the interactive floors that had already been made. The kids explored the different kinds of interactivity, theorized about how the system worked, and started coming up with ideas of their own almost immediately. Next, we went for a walk. It's always nice to go see the world when you're coming up with new ideas. We walked to the park and talked about their ideas for interactive floors. On our walk, Gus collected different things he thought he might use in his design. By the time we returned to the office, the boys had each decided what they wanted to make. Both boys were focused, thoughtful, and inventive. Gus enjoyed explaining the interactivity he wanted to our programmer, while Ruben researched spiders so he could draw his own spiders for his design. If it didn't violate child labor laws, I would hire these kids. They would make an excellent creative department. I hope their parents continue to let me borrow them. They're going to say wow and stuff. They're going to say wow, kid actually made that. That's what they're going to say. So... <laughs> Thank you. I didn't really do any work. They, they did everything. Um, but yeah, they're really, really excited about what they've built. Um, so I'm going to invite Gus and Ruben onto the stage. Come on out, guys. Thank you. 